bombshell article on alleged rapes on the University of Virginia campus. The article, titled A Rape on Campus, described a frat house gang rape of a woman named Jackie, and it took UVA to task for failing to respond to the alleged sexual assault. Rolling Stone never talked to any of the men Jackie named as her attackers, and now Rolling Stone has put an apology on its website saying, quote, we were trying to be sensitive to the unfair shame and humiliation many women feel after a sexual assault and now regret the decision to not contact the alleged assaulters to get their account. We are taking seriously, taking this seriously and apologize to anyone who was affected by the story, end quote. I want to go to CNN Sarah Gannon, who is on UVA's campus. So, Sarah, uh, we just got that statement also from the uh, Phi Kappa Psi fraternity and what was said. Yeah, that's right, Frederica. Just a few minutes ago, we got an updated statement from the spokesperson for the Phi Kappa Psi fraternity saying that this fraternity and university officials actually contacted Charlottesville police and were working with them weeks before the article came out about this specific allegation. I want to read you more of that statement, Fred, while I have it here. It says, while individual undergraduate members of the chapter were contacted by the Rolling Stone writer to comment on the, quote, gang rape at FISI, they provided no information because they had none to provide. The allegations were as surprising and shocking to them as they were to everyone else. To my knowledge, no member was contacted by the Rolling Stone fact-checkers. Now, Fred, this is coming, like you said, a day after Rolling Stone appears to be dialing back, stepping away from their reporting on that explosive story, and also stepping back from the woman who was at the center of that piece. Not one more! After an article that prompted outrage at the University of Virginia, Rolling Stone magazine has apologized for discrepancies about an alleged gang rape on the Charlottesville campus. Rolling Stone editors say they made the choice not to contact key figures in the alleged attack on Jackie, the woman who was the subject of the article for fear of retaliation against her. The magazine said, In the face of new information, there now appear to be discrepancies in Jackie's account and we have come to the conclusion that our trust in her was misplaced. The article also chronicled the school's failure to respond to that alleged assault, which in turn prompted a UVA suspension of all fraternity activities until January, and a zero-tolerance policy towards sexual assault cases. We must find where it hides out and root it out. According to the magazine, Jackie claimed she was raped by seven men during a party at the Phi Kappa Psi fraternity house. However, the fraternity says there was no party the night of the alleged attack in September 2012, and the chapter's lawyer says he has the records to prove it. He also discredits other parts of the story. In the meantime, Jackie's friends and supporters are left confused. They still believe Jackie experienced a trauma, but the new contradictory information has left them questioning what really might have happened to Jackie. The Washington Post talked to Jackie, who stands by her story. She told the Post, I never asked for this. What bothers me is that so many people act like it didn't happen. Despite the latest developments in the story, students still turned out at a campus vigil last night, determined to keep the focus on combating sexual assault against women. It's terrible that they are going against her now and placing the and placing irresponsibility upon her as someone who's guilty or someone who is untrustworthy. Because I feel that they should have known from the beginning, publishing that story, that it was something that they could never know exactly what happened. And again, that is not the single issue here. The issue is the wider problem of sexual assault on college campuses. Now, Fred, I just want to run through some of those discrepancies as described to us from the fraternity's uh, attorney. Some interesting facts. So they say that there was no party the night that Jackie describes being raped. That was in September 2012. That the man who she says orchestrated the attack, that he was not a member, according to the lawyer, he was not a member of Phi Psi fraternity. That there was no side staircase that she describes in the story as walking down inside the house before she exits through a side door. The attorney says that does not exist. And finally, that there were no pledges during that time of year. Now, Fred, just one quick thing. I think it's important to say what isn't being disputed here, and that's the university's overall response to sexual assault on campus. The university has admitted that it has never expelled a student for sexual assault, even when that student 
admitted to it, and survivors who I've talked to here on campus, as well as fraternity leaders in Creek Life, have said that's where the focus should be, that the stories of those survivors should not be discredited because of this. All right. right. Uh, Sarah Ganim, thanks so much from the UVA campus. Let's bring in CNN legal analyst Joey Jackson and senior media correspondent Brian Stelter. So, Brian, to you first. Rolling Stone initially stood by its reporting. I mean, it was the cover story, uh, even That's though right. the other side wasn't... Um, Printed and the editors knew that. That is part of the process when reporter talks to editor before anything is printed. So how much of a blow to the magazine's image is this? Or does this also display that there is a, a breakdown in the process in which a story is printed, is vetted before you know it is in front of the readers? At this moment, it is a crushing blow for Rolling Stone, Frederica. They have done so many uh, excellent reports over the years, so many really important stories about important topics. You know, we think of the magazine as being a music magazine, but it's not. It is also a forum for deep investigative reporting about important stories. But this is clearly a breakdown in the process, and they've acknowledged as much. Uh, there is usually a rigorous fact-checking process at Rolling Stone, as there is uh, at many magazines. But in this case, they made a very conscious decision, a judgment call, not to reach out to the other side of this story, not to reach out to the alleged accusers. It's not even clear if they knew the names of the accusers. Mm -hmm. And they have acknowledged that was an error. They should not have agreed to Jackie's wishes not to have the accusers contact. So, so Brian, that, that Rolling Stone is calling it an apology. It's not a retraction. That's right. But is That's this important. apology the prelude to a retraction? Is that where we're going? Or is it oh. apology and that's it? More reporting needs to be done by Rolling Stone and others, and I think that's why they haven't gone all the way. They're, if they were to call it a retraction, they would be saying that Jackie's story is false, and they don't have the evidence for that. I, I think it's you know I, I think what Sarah was saying is, is crucially important here. That Jackie stands by her story, mm -hmm. and that many of her friends feel there was clearly something very traumatic that occurred. But because parts of the story are now in dispute, mm -hmm. uh, they had to at least come out and apologize as they get to the bottom of it. Hmm. And then, Joey, the alleged attackers were not named, um, but instead there were nicknames in the story. And um, the, the woman who is described as Jackie also describes who, you know, her initial alleged ta attacker was, that he was, you know, third year, that he worked in a swimming pool as a lifeguard. So uh, how can Rolling Stone really defend itself here in also trying to protect the identity of people in the story? Sure. Frederica, good morning. Good morning, Brian. This is problematic uh, for a number of reasons, Frederica. An important part of investigative reporting is to corroborate and confirm facts prior to printing them. And so the issue then becomes, is it defamation? Have they, in fact... Uh, affected the reputation of people and has that effective reputation caused those individuals damages in their lives and so it all depends and turns on whether there's truth to this because an absolute defense to defamation or any legal action is that it's true but there are serious issues as Sarah's report unveiled in terms of the factual underpinnings of this case did it happen how did it happen the logistics of what actually went on and so we don't know but certainly there are serious troubles and problems that should have been uh, certainly investigated. And so, Frederica, if there's negligence on the part of Rolling Stone with regard to their reporting, not only might the individuals of that particular piece have a cause of action and claim, but the fraternity in and of itself, based upon the light in which it was displayed to the public, may have a cause of action because, let's face it, people were really taken aback and quite disturbed by all the details and how has that affected the fraternity and so to the extent that it may have and this is untrue Rolling Stone exposes itself to a great deal of liability potentially. Mm -hmm. All right, Joey Jackson. Most